But today, I'll be giving you my top 5 power rankings for this upcoming summer. Copa America. Between North America, South America, it being combined, it is going to be a brilliant Copa America this summer. A very, very interesting Copa America this summer between a lot of talented teams, in my opinion, with the U.S. men's national team. Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, Uruguay, Chile, Ecuador. Mexico bringing a young team that I think will be much more deadly than they've, you know, than they've shown the last couple of years with this new sort of unknown, this relatively unknown um, Mexican team. I'm interested to see them. I think they'll be high energy. They'll bring a lot of good to it. Jamaica, they'll bring a lot of talent to the players. Canada, they're always an option. You know, they're decent. They qualified for the World Cup. They're in turmoil federation-wise. But in terms of the team, they do have talent. You cannot deny that. But today I'm gonna be giving you my top five Copa America power rankings. And um, this is gonna be surprising. No, it's not gonna be surprising, it's gonna be obvious. I'm gonna go number five. I'm gonna go with the US men's national team that goes in at number five. Um, I think the US men's national team this is one of the most talented generations that we've ha ever had. We're a very, very talented team. You know, when you look at the likes of Christian Pulisic, Timothy Weah, Yunus Musa, Giovanni Reyna, uh, this is a solid team. Good attacking talent, good midfield was Tyler Adams, uh, Weston McKinney, defensively with Chris Richards, it's solid back there. Um, um, Anthony Robinson, good left back. Sergino Des, he's out for an injury, so a guy like Joe Scali is going to come in. Defensively, they're solid. there's talent in this team, much more talent than previous U.S. men's national team. It's still a young team, but there's, they've gotten World Cup experience, they're getting more experience in there. But my main thing with the problem with them, and I think that'll stop them from taking that next level, is their manager. They don't have a manager that makes a team better than the sum of their parts. I don't like Greg Berhalter. I've made that very, very clear. I don't think we've ever won a game that we ha shouldn't have won. I think every game that we won is a team that we were better than. I think a brilliant manager may who performs, like, takes a team ahead of, you know, some teams that have more talent in them, but he can take, get the best out of them for the sum of their parts that they have. I think we don't have that kind of manager. I think our manager is just eh, bland. And in fact, I think he can be a detriment in his time when it comes to his squad selections, when it comes to his inability to adjust in game, make the right substitutions, um, to come out with lineups. You know, whenever we had that disgraceful decision last World Cup against Netherlands to start Jesus Ferreira, who was a joke in the first half before he yanked them out, decisions like that, not bringing on Giovanni Reyna in the World Cup, and then playing him in the last game as a false nine, a position that he's never played in in his U.S. men's national team career, is just Greg Berhalter. I'm not a huge fan of him. I think he's not a good manager whatsoever, and I think... Um, of the U.S. do want to go on some sort of run at the World Cup, they need to bring in a brilliant manager. And he is very, very, very far from being a brilliant manager. In fact, I consider him a detriment to the U.S. men's national team. Now we move on to the next topic of the uh, next place. I say number four is Colombia. Now, Colombia's national team are in brilliant form. In, um, they've been unbeaten for a very long time now. They play beautiful, beautiful attacking football. Um, they've been unbeaten for a very long time now. They played very, very well in qualifiers. They had a good international window, last window, by beating the likes of Romania and uh, uh, a Romanian team that qualified for the Euros, by the way. They beat the likes of Romania and Spain in Europe in, in very good fashion, the way that they played Spain. They, um, you know, they played toe to toe with Spain. They have a talent with Luis Diaz, Casiera, Arias, Carrasco. There's team in there. There's Lerma in midfield, uh, Castaño, uh, James Rodriguez. He has experience. He he still has you know, he still has his nature, his ability. Um, but this is a team that's very very fluid, and their star man is indeed Luis Diaz. He'll, he gets them their goals. He's the he gets their most of their production. They were un, they've been unbeaten so far in Konumbul World Cup qualifiers with um uh, with three wins and three draws. They've been very like they've been no brilliant, brilliant in um, qualifiers. So I think that the, you know I think that they're gonna be a very very good team at. Uh, 
um, at uh, this summer. Uribe, Bar Barrios, they give you something different in midfield. Davison Sanchez, Cuesta, good center back partnership there. Uh, and then since they, since um, Nestor Lorenzo, Argentine manager, came in, he's got them playing very, very good football. So that's why I have them number four. Number three, I'm going to go with Uruguay. Uruguay is a team with Marcelo Bielsa. They're on the up and come. Marcelo Bielsa, brilliant football. They play a local football, crazy football, crazy attacking football with flair, high intensity. They get numbers forward up. Um, uh, they, uh, they play very, very energetic, wide football, um, high intensity, um, attack, attack, attack. And then the players that they have at their disposal with a guy like Darwin Nunez, who despite the chances he missed, he's still a very, very good football and he, footballer and he fits very, very well in, um, in his system, in, um, uh, uh, Marcelo Bielsa's system. They got guys like Palestri with pace that can go in and affect him from behind. They got a very solid midfield of Federico Valverde and Ugarte. And Ronald Arrojo, he, he, um, he's also a brilliant, brilliant center back. Um, Ronald Arrojo, uh, he's going to be a brilliant, he's a brilliant, brilliant center back. He's going to be very, very important. You know, I'm looking at it right now. He's wanted by Uday Emery and Munchi at Aston Villa. Okay, forget about it. Like... Let's be honest, that's not going to happen. <laughs> it, 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 that's not going to happen, guys. I mean, but he, but he's a very, very brilliant footballer. And um, they have good, you know, they have good talent in this team. They have good experience in this team. So I really think they are, are going to be a threat. And they have this kind of, you know, this knack for doing well in international competition. Number two is Brazil. Now, Brazil, they've really struggled in the World Cup qualifiers. They've lost three games, which is a ridiculous amount for Brazil already. And they've lost three games already in World Cup qualifiers for uh, Brazil, and they've dropped the games at home, which is kind of embarrassing. Their two wins, one draw, three losses. It's been a very, very rough World Cup qualifier for them. But a lot of this came under Fernando Diniz, their temporary interim coach. But since they brought in now their manager, Dorvel Jr., and they played their first two games under him in the international window. And they went on and they beat England in Wembley. And they drew against Spain. Two pretty good results. Two pretty good in performances. Especially when we look at it, the fact that they did it away from home in Europe. Pretty good results. And they got Vinicius and Rodrigo that are high powering, performing very, very well. Now that there's no Neymar at this um, World Cup. I think it makes it a little bit more easier for guys like Vinicius and Rodrigo to gel together and to show some of the form that they showed at Real Madrid for Brazil in terms of consistency, in terms of the clinicalness, the clinical nature that they have. Vinicius Jr., let's be honest, he's been, he hasn't been good for Brazil. He's never showed up for Brazil. And he, you know, he needs to start performing for Brazil. They also have a guy like Hendrik who's not going to come in and he's not going to make an immediate impact in this team. But He's a guy that you can look at future for talent. I think a front three of Vinicius Jr., Rodrigo, and Rafinha is very, very good. And then a midfield of Douglas Luiz, Bruno Gramaes, Lucas Paqueta. That's, you know, that's a decent midfield. João Gomez. And then, now the back line is a little bit shaky. I would probably go with Yao Cotto, Jan Cotto, uh, Gabriel Magalesi, uh, Marquinhos, and then that other fullback position, um, I don't know, I don't know, it's a, uh, I don't know, now maybe it's a crime not to play Danilo back there because of the experience that he has, but out with the, you know, that back line, that is going to be very, very concerning, but I think Brazil generally, they've always had a solid defense, not just because of the defense, but their ability to keep the ball and get pressure off the defense, and those defenders are also can have a brilliant goalkeeper and Allison behind them, so they, 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 you know, they have some protection there. Number one has to be the defending champions, Argentina. Lionel Messi and Argentina in the co. This is the last run for guys like Di Maria. Now, Messi, he hasn't said this is his last run, but, you know, there's a chance potentially. Uh, Otamendi is another guy. This potentially is probably going to be his last tournament. Uh, but this is the Argentina team with many experience from their World Cup team. Emiliano, Emiliano Martinez, Messi, uh, uh, Alexis McAllister, Paredes, Rodrigo De Paul, Di Maria, 
Lautaro Martinez, and then you bring in a guy like Garnacho, who gives you some verticality and can change it up in games. Julian Alvarez, he's a brilliant player too, also has World Cup experience. This Argentina team, they're clearly the favorites, and the question is, is there much competition for them at this Copa America at this point? They did struggle against Uruguay earlier in World Cup qualifiers. They lost to them at home. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's clear to everybody that they are the favorites to win, to win Copa America.